Last week's battle for the House Speakership produced some of the best ratings C-SPAN has seen in decades. Here to tell us more about this moment for the history books is Church Milton's reporter Christine Chrisley. Christine, good to see you. Hey, Hunter. Well, we saw all the television coverage for McCarthy's run for House Speaker, but tonight we'll get a behind the scenes look at the new speaker from a political insider. There's a good lot about being in that chamber that I don't miss, but that's the arena I really wanted to be in last week in the middle of that fight. If there ever was a time I was wish I wish I was back in Congress, that was the time. Former Iowa Representative Steve King was watching from a unique vantage point last week's war for Speaker of the House. I nominate Kevin McCarthy for Speaker of the House. Kevin McCarthy destroyed his career in 2019. Rhino Republicans came gunning for King because of his influence on the Iowa caucuses. Led by Kevin McCarthy, they used a New York Times misquote to strip him of his committee appointments and ultimately to run him out of Congress. The House Republicans um, denounce his language. We do not believe in his language. And um, we've decided that he will not serve on any um, committees. I still could not believe that any, anybody with a shred of morality would, would unleash all of the press in the country, unleash the effort. The Democrats were already lined up against me, and I had stood against everything they could throw. But when you turn your own party leadership against, against you at the national level, at the state level, without a shred of evidence other than a misquote in the New York Times, and Kevin McCarthy stood on that like a prosecuting attorney. During the recent 15 rounds of voting for Speaker, King was busy making sure as many people as possible understood what was at stake. Well, I wanted to make sure they had a good knowledge base, a, a high level of suspicion of, of McCarthy's his character, and at the same time understand the facts of the history of McCarthy and understand how slippery that guy is. I mean, mm -hmm. and, and it was said in one of those discussions, and it wasn't by me, but I thought it was so true, I repeat it, is that Kevin McCarthy will look you in the eye and lie to you, and he doesn't care if you know he's lying. King believes some of the 20 McCarthy holdouts made a tactical error by focusing on procedural changes that would allow more power sharing. They got most of the things that were very important to them, but the one that was most important was McCarthy's character. I would have made it all about that because you, you cannot negotiate that. While informed Republicans no longer have any illusions about McCarthy, he did succeed in achieving his ultimate ambition to be Speaker of the House. You can watch on the site the entire interview with the congressman and find out how Kevin McCarthy and National Right to Life killed the heartbeat bill that King authored and how to get an autographed copy of his book, Walking Through the Fire. Mm. Thank you for that, Christine. So you spent like 30 minutes or so interviewing the congressman. What did he say was behind McCarthy's willingness to push through 15 rounds of voting? Yeah, it was exhausting. He said McCarthy is an extremely ambitious man. Uh, he was pointing out that 80% um, of the people who are elected to Congress arrive with some sort of personal agenda. You know, they're trying to put themselves forward somehow. And that certainly was true of McCarthy. Here, here's what the congressman said. Kevin McCarthy, his whole agenda from the time he came into Congress, and I was there when he first came in, was to become Speaker of the House. Oh. And he knew that I would not vote for Kevin McCarthy for Speaker of the House. You know, in a, but I think um, in contrast to uh, Kevin McCarthy, I think it's important to point out why those 20 Congress members, those holdouts, forced 15 rounds of voting. Why did they do it? Why did they put the country through it? They were fighting for access to power. And King pointed out, um, th I, I thought this was astounding and remarkable, that in six, year, in six years, there hadn't been an amendment allowed on the floor by a rank and file member of Congress. That is amazing to me. So, so don't be fooled by the new rules, however. Uh, McCarthy still holds a great deal of power. And the congressman explains it. it, it he talks about that, that in some detail in the interview. It's very, very interesting. So, for example, he said, uh, the speak, uh, despite all these rules that have been changed, 
the speaker still holds subpoena power exclusively. And so he'll have a major impact on all these uh, incoming investi uh, upcoming investigations of, you know, big tech censorship, COVID, and all the other investigations that are planned. If Kevin McCarthy holds um, the, the subpoena power exclusively, there are going to be things that won't be able to uh, 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 lines of investigation that will not be able to be pursued without his okay. So. And quickly here, why did McCarthy, combining these two people together, why did McCarthy go after Steve King? Well, um, when, when King was uh, representative in Iowa, he was a very powerful political figure, and he... Um, uh, and he had a lot of power in the Iowa caucuses, which, you know, set the pace and the agenda of the presidential uh, election cycle. And so that's one of the reasons he was targeted. Hopefully McCarthy turns out to be actually conservative, but we'll see. And Christine, thank you for your time. Hey, great. Thanks.